Hey everyone, uh, this is VJ Fader. Uh, today I'm going to give you a full review on Roland V-1 HD Video Mixer. This is an awesome little unit that fits in your backpack. And uh, I'm going to talk about it from my personal point of view, from VJing at festivals, and how this unit fits into your VJ workflow. All right, let's take a closer look. Uh, before I hook everything up uh, to this mixer, uh, I want to show you this little bag that I got uh, for the mixer, which is actually made for uh, tractor control series uh, MIDI controllers. And uh, this little guy happens to fit really nicely. There's also some padding to prevent the knobs from uh, getting broken in the bag. It's very sturdy. And there's the mixer. And uh, of course, the power adapter doesn't fit into this bag, so you have to carry it separately. Let's take a look at the back of the unit. Uh, one quick note about the inputs. There's four inputs in the back. And personally, uh, I never use all four inputs because it's, it's actually, you know, if you, it's great to have the option of having four HDMI inputs on the mixer itself. And that's totally awesome. But, but again, you know, if you really think about it, I mean, in reality, it's difficult to find four different inputs all coming in at the same time and switching and mixing uh, during your show because uh, that's, that's, a, that's a very rare scenario. I just wanted to point that out. And then one preview output and one master output. There's your power plug, you need a power adapter for this, doesn't just run off of USB. Uh, this USB port is for machine control to communicating from your laptop to the mixer so you can connect the, control the mixer's full functionality from your laptop. And we're going to show that in a second. Um, there's also audio controls. Uh, personally, I never use the audio controls because uh, when I'm Doing visuals, I'm only using video mixing and I don't deal with anything about audio. There's also a mic and phone input on the side, which is great for a live broadcast, uh, for moderating and for monitoring your sound uh, when inside the mixer itself. And of course, in the front, you have this classic T bar, which uh, kind of separates this unit as a video controller versus uh, most uh, DJ controllers, which has a fader. This is smaller than most DJ mixers uh, that's on the market and uh, it's, you know, it's very solidly built, has an aluminum panel in the front and plastic back, but you know, the whole unit feels very solid. I'll quickly uh, go over what I have connected here. So this is uh, something I programmed called EDMT for Android running on the tablet. Uh, going out uh, with a dongle to HDMI. Uh, we got a touch designer running on my PC laptop that's also making this uh, big fan noise. And finally, uh, AV Mixer Pro running on this uh, MacBook Pro 13 inch. Uh, and uh, here you have your preview output on the computer monitor here. Switching between the fading between the two sources that this box color changes. That means this switches between preview and live. So it gives you an indication of what the color connected to the button colors. You might not see it very clearly, but when you switch, uh, these buttons light up, which is really nice, especially in a dark place. Uh, and you can also change the color of these buttons. There are some presets you can change. As you notice, this little HDCP light is blinking and uh, I want to talk about this for a second because it's actually kind of important because uh, I have this tablet connected through the dongle which requires HDCP handshake and what that means is if this unit you can turn HDCP on or off in the menu and if you have it turned off, this tablet will not output the signal, which means basically your device from the beginning to the end to the monitor 
all have to have HDCP turned on and communicating through this protocol. It's kind of a copy protection protocol, meaning that you know it's kind of preventing people from copying movies and from you know video players and things like that. So sometimes your laptop requires HDCP handshake to the projector, for example. Then you have to turn it on and make sure all devices are connect sending and handshaking through HTCP protocol. Uh, and this becomes a real headache sometimes because when you connect your laptop to a projector sometimes uh, through the mixer and then you're like, what? Why is it not working? There's no signal coming. You switch all the cables and then you play around with all these settings and then nothing works. It's because some projectors require HDCP handshake for it to work. To bring up the menu, you want to press and hold this button for two seconds. Yeah, here's the menu. You navigate through from uh, with your uh, transform up down button and then to change any of the settings, uh, you will use your T bar to go up and down and then you pick, you know, you pick the number, say BPM, I want 101 BPM and then you just scroll through and then go through different settings. And uh, funny enough, this really reminds me of the old school V4 menu. It almost seems like identical. And you know, it's pretty straightforward, uh, has really big font, everything's in bold and capital letters. Uh, it's fairly easy to read, but I, 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 kind, of, I kind of wish uh, you know, they updated the menu system so it doesn't have these three pages and uh, four pages of stuff to go through. Uh, in every page, there's no sub-menus, you know, there's no categories of settings and like everything is kind of all in the same place, more or less, uh, which, which is totally okay. I, I don't hate this um, layout uh, necessarily. I think it does the job. It totally does the job, but it totally does not say anything about, you know, modern, uh, you know, what a modern menu might look like. It's just very straightforward, very simple. However, there's a lot of effects. Here's your effects, um, both, you know, layer A and B. There's basically two layers with four different inputs uh, and um, plus you know, there's your BPM sync, wipe, mix, and cut. These are different uh, transition modes. You can switch. When you do the crossbar, you can do wipe or mix or hard cut, and these are your transforms. These settings are not in the menu, so you have to set it on the fly. Uh, and uh, I want to mention this now that a lot of these, uh, uh, here's your fade to black, which is I think is most important function here, which is super useful. Um, but I, I really want to mention that this unit is great, but there is no on-screen display, uh, which I can see that it could you know, add to the cost of the unit, but I, I, I swear, you, you wanna see what you're picking. All these knobs are picking through a lot of different effects, um, but you, you, you're more or less going blind because, you, you know, unless you see what's going on, you don't know what, what it's doing. Uh, and this can be solved through, uh, like I mentioned earlier, there is a laptop software that you can use to control everything on this unit, which is great. And you can also look at what effects you're picking. But that is not a very, that's, that's not the definitive solution to this problem because there should be a small display here that shows what is actually going on with this effects. If you know, if there is effects, then I want to know what I'm picking. And of course, like the menu we just saw, it would be awesome to have a display that shows all the little settings that's on here. Because a lot of times, uh, when you go to a show, you know, you, you don't always bring a computer monitor with you. You know, you bring your laptop, you bring a little mixer. But there is no monitor, so there is no way to see these settings on this screen. It doesn't, you know, it's like you're basically driving blind uh, during the show. So uh, in those scenarios, when you don't have the luxury of having a preview monitor, you want to be able to 
see that setting on the unit itself, you know. Let's take a look at the uh, built-in effects on this uh, mixer. Um, turn this off. So yeah, again, there's your fade. Uh, you can switch very quickly through these buttons. Uh, there's almost like no delay. It's instant switching. So it goes, it's super fast. And um, you can use your T-bar and also use your transform buttons. Now you can go like, it's auto, it's like an auto fade mode. It's like automatically fading to uh, A or B channel. And then, so each, each channel you can assign an effect. So now I'm on channel A. You can turn the effect on and off. And uh, pressing and hold the, the effects on off button and then you twist this knob and then it switches the effect. So it goes through all the effects in a row. And this is what I mean that, uh, you know, you don't know what you're getting until you see it uh, kind of scenario. And then there's no uh, easy way to picking the one specific effect that you like on the unit itself because, you know, they're all in a row on this, on this knob that doesn't tell you which effect number it's on. So it's, it's a bit, you know, driving blind, uh, going through all these different effects. There's a lot of different effects, you know, invert and different color modes. It's like a black and white. Uh, and then towards the end, you have your picture in picture. Uh, for example, in picture in picture mode, you can use your knob to adjust the position of uh, your, you know, your layered pictures, uh, which is cool. Um, there's also a sort of a key mode, you know, you can key out either like the brightness or the darkest stuff or a certain color. It's not the most cleanest um, keying, but again, you can adjust a lot of these things uh, on the fly. And this is great. Uh, again, you know, if you, if you have a Two, diff two or more sources together, you can you know, do a lot of compositing and uh, layering outside of your computer. Because a lot of times when you go too much on your computer and then it really slows everything down, this way everything's on hardware, uh, nothing's slowing down. Um, I, I think it's great that the unit has a lot of built-in effects, uh, different layering uh, effects, and also this picture-in-picture. Uh, I think it all comes in handy uh, because I, you know, for most VJs, they're doing all this stuff on their laptop these days, heavy compositing and, and different effects. And, um, you know, point being, you almost never uh, use these effects on the hardware itself. And for me, the most important part of having a mixer is to be able to switch between sources. Uh, a nice crossfade that's fast, a nice switching that's very fast. And to be able to go to black, you know, this is like one of the most important things I look for when I have an external mixer. Sometimes I only have one source going into a mixer and just to have to be able to go to black, you know, if I want to. And it's so nice to have an extra uh, layer of uh, security when just in case something happens, uh, you know, with your setup uh, then, or, you know, another VJ is coming in and they need to plug in. This is a really awesome way of managing all these scenarios to have that extra external flexibility. So you're not switching cables during a show, uh, unplug and plugging in laptops directly to your source, like, you know, uh, say uh, projectors or uh, you know, uh, LED processors, you don't want to plug and unplug during the show. It really introduces a lot of problems. Try out the BPM sync here. You can tap your BPM to whatever speed uh, to the music, you know. Uh, and uh, there's a BPM toggle uh, that toggles this effect. And then you can choose between wipe, mix, or cut that it just transitions in between beats. 
for me, any, any automated effects just feels really robotic after, you know, a few seconds. It's like, oh yeah, you know, it's doing this automatically back and forth. Uh, I think it's okay. It, it's, it's, you know, it's not the you know, most amazing thing to use. Here's a, here's a nice little trick. If you switch your preview out to output mode, right? And then send the preview out to one of the inputs, then you can actually create a hardware feedback on this mixer itself. And uh, let's check it out. So I'm in the menu, I'm gonna turn off the menu. And this is one of the video inputs. And then you can see it's creating this software uh, hardware feedback, which is kind of cool. It has this turns into this greenish. You can adjust how much feedback you want with your T bar. Um, so yeah, so you can do hardware feedback in this unit itself. All right, so I just downloaded this software, Roland V-1 HD RCS and uh, you can use it to machine control your uh, mixer remotely from your laptop. Let's take a look. Uh, to connect the device, uh, you have to click on this button at the lower left-hand corner, uh, and now it's on. And uh, the color, the button of the color is now changed, so it indicates which source you are switching to, and uh, yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of cool. They also have an iPad app uh, that does the same thing. Uh, so basically, you can do everything on this interface panel here itself is exactly what you have on your unit. Uh, if you um, look at the layout, everything is the same. So what's interesting for me is this this section down here. This is not part of the UI on the hardware unit itself, it's all more or less hidden. So this way you can actually dive in and see all the settings and change it here. And you can also have presets. So you can have save some uh, custom settings in your memory. So you have different types of shows. You can call your presets here. Uh, here's your effects list. So now we have these different effects where you can just pick it with your mouse, uh, a, B effects, you know, on the B side, you want to have a different effect or whatever, different types of transitions, uh, different types of wipes and mix modes, uh, and uh, your transform options. Yeah, so all this stuff is pretty useful, I would say, especially when there is no on-screen display. I think this is a definitely a big plus um, and a really nice addition to the hardware unit itself, uh, just to have an app, you know, have this ability to have the option of controlling your entire unit uh, from the software interface on your laptop or on your iPad. So I hope you guys liked the review of uh, Roland V-1 HD. Uh, again, I think it's a great, awesome unit that's under $1,000. That's super compact, it fits in your backpack, you can take it anywhere. Really, um, it, it's an amazing piece of uh, hardware uh, for VJs because you know they had a history of creating VJ products starting from V4, that was a classic analog mixer, to V8 it was not quite, you know, it wasn't high, it wasn't HD, it wasn't high res, it was still standard res with, you know, it was, didn't make that much sense for the price tag. Uh, but now, you know, with this, uh, you know, V-1 HD, it's really awesome. It's really solid unit. Uh, I hope they continue this tradition and continue, uh, you know, developing a compact video mixers. Um, hopefully they put in a display of some sorts so you can see the menu uh, and uh, maybe a 4K version in the future. Uh, and, you know, maybe uh, only with two inputs. You don't have to have four inputs. Uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, Hit the subscribe button or leave a comment below. Tell us uh, what you think uh, and uh, thanks for watching.